What's the most powerful word in the world? Some might say it's money. Others will tell you it's success. Family. Love. The truth is even more profound. It's a word that enables exploration, that drives innovation. Three letters that have inspired people to cross continents, start movements, and change the world. It's a word that unites and empowers us. Yes! Yes! Yes, 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 yes! yes! Will you drive growth or drive efficiency? Will you elevate experience or lower expenses? Will you satisfy employees or satisfy customers? Will you invest in people or invest in tech? Yes. The intelligent platform for digital transformation makes it all possible. In a world of difficult choices, now you can just say, Yes. Please give a warm welcome to President and Chief Operating Officer of ServiceNow, CJ Desai. It is just absolutely fantastic to be here. I am so energized to show you some of the amazing innovations in our platform, including our products, with some key announcements and a special guest today about our ServiceNow platform and what we are up to in our engineering teams. Yesterday, Bill mentioned this, you know, to describe ServiceNow has always been hard. I have practiced it on my kids, practiced it on my parents, my dad, yeah, it's like, okay, I get it, but not really. And then dinner parties, Christmas parties, and I'm constantly improvising as I'm doing right now. So finally went to the history book, and I think I had a breakthrough. Fred Taylor, 1880s, there was a crisis for national efficiency. And he looked at physical workflow and how the work should move so you get the maximum output and productivity for any process. That's what he studied. He's pioneered with the discipline called scientific management and made the physical workflows better. 120 years later, another Fred, as he thought about all the computing shifts, all the way from mainframe to PCs, to mobile, to clouds, hybrid, public, private, try to figure out how work can be routed across the systems where technology became the business process. When te technology became the business process, how should work get routed? And here we are. We are a workflow automation company that makes processes digital and specifically helps you automate many, many tasks. Fred created this company as a platform company. ServiceNow, at its core, always has been a platform company. And our amazing engineering team, the platform that Fred built, continues to innovate by adding technologies in the platform, by adding technologies in the platform, and you look at RPA, look at machine learning, and the team is so good that when we need to refactor, you gave us feedback that, hey, CJ, fulfiller user experience is not great. All right, we heard your feedback. Thank you for showing up at our product advisory council. We always want to do better. 
So we made our user experience better in the platform. Search, my first knowledge 2017, many of you told me keyword search doesn't do it well. So we refactored search. So when you look at these technologies, all the way from user experience, machine learning, either we are building new technologies in the platform or we are refactoring the technologies in the platform so we can serve you for digital workflows. Now, if you look at our product portfolio, product portfolio has evolved significantly. ITSM was our first use case at scale, but when you go from left to right, whether you are in digital organization, technology organization, whether you are in CTO's office or HR organization, yesterday Bill touched on, we want your permission to be an enterprise-wide intelligent platform. That's what we are working hard. We productize these use cases, these business processes, whether it's onboarding, procurement service management, supplier lifecycle management, doesn't matter which process, if we can provide that out of box for you, that's when you can really, really automate and become more digital. That's it, right? Now our platform roadmap, many of you ask us, so we do releases every six months. We have asked you many times, should we do faster? You have said, nope, six months is good. And then we do quarterly releases between these major releases, and sometimes our engineering team will also do monthly releases, and with AI, we are going to actually even move faster on some of these releases. Vancouver, beautiful city. Washington, D.C., we debated, should we just call it Washington? So the state of Washington and D.C., but then what picture do you show? So we said Washington, D.C. And then I tried to pronounce really hard Xanadu, try to look up cities that start with X. We didn't have a lot of choices. I tried to pronounce it. Went to YouTube, looked at Olivia Newton-John's video, and that song is stuck in my head. And my wife said, please, please stop it, don't sing it. She did an amazing job. Don't say Xanadu ever. So this is the last time I'm gonna say Xanadu here. So our platform priorities are pretty simple. Today we are going to show you, for all of you around automation, specifically for IT, we have some fantastic live demos. We are also going to talk about digital experiences, customer experiences or employee experiences, and end with intelligence. And what is ServiceNow up to for the past few years on intelligence, and where is ServiceNow going on intelligence including what Fred used to do in the early knowledge is live demos. So we're gonna take that risk. All right, so before I start all that, I want to share with you, you know, we have learned from you in trying to make our platform better. And for one out of four of you, you are either our platform owners, system administrators, or somebody who owns the ServiceNow program. So first of all, thank you. Your job is not easy. Being a platform owner, you have demand coming from multiple stakeholders, not only just employees, but also lines of businesses. And we have worked very hard for things that are very basic, whether it's CMDB, service graph connectors, CMDB workspace, so people say, okay, where is our CMDB health? Can I look at the entire CMDB map? Upgrade speed, downtime, security patching, all those things that really, really matter to you. It's a journey and we are always trying to improve here. So there are some of quick innovations I'm gonna to touch on very fast for our platform owners. So first one is next experience. We rolled this out in San Diego 45% of you have already turned this on. The idea was for you not to write any of your business rules again, and you can specifically turn this on. It's a modern UI. You just turn on via one switch. The feedback has been positive. All of you who turned it on, or 99%, have kept it turned on. Navigation efficiency, 35% productivity for navigating the service now. 
platform, including LeftNav, all the things you know here, we are gonna turn that on by default in Vancouver release. So next experience. Second, team builder. You work for some of amazing corporations, companies, governments. You're very proud of your own brand. To create teaming required a lot of JavaScripting code, and there is not enough chat GPT to go around to automate that, all right? So we wanted to give you no code, truly no code, just few minutes, and you can pick your colors for your company, your brand, and you can theme the entire platform and call it in your company's name. So Team Builder is available beginning Utah. Third, we talked about upgrade testing, upgrade, speed of the upgrade, automated testing framework we introduced a few years ago, but then you gave us feedback, hey CJ, that's great, but we still need to write tests. They run on a local environment, so we moved it to cloud, so you can enjoy the capacity of ServiceNow Cloud, and this allows you to not only generate automated tests, but run them so you can have maybe 25% improvement on the actual upgrade. So you can test faster and upgrade faster. Next one, subscription management. All of you give us feedback, hey, we really need to understand how much is our usage, your licensing is very complex, totally fair, as we have evolved. And can you give us this one page where we can look at all the subscription what have we consumed, which apps we have turned on. So we'll be launching this in Vancouver for all of our products to make your life easier, including all the user community that you support. And yesterday you heard from Paul when he opened here, but many of you have given us feedback on accessibility. And this is very important, you know, when we looked into this few years ago, Men suffer more on color blindness than women, and it is actually a decent population size, as in our end users, somewhere in four to seven percent, that suffer from color blindness. So we want to work hard. WCAG compliance, really, really understanding that we want to serve all of our end users, our platform. You serve them for your employees, you serve them for your customers, and this is really important to us. So now the charts are easier to read. And when you look at the forms, we already did 200% magnification on Core Service Now UI, but in Vancouver, we are going to do 400% magnification. So it makes it easier for every single user. So this is what we have done for our platform owners, system administrators, so that you can roll out our functionality and innovation that teams have worked very, very hard on for the past few years. Okay, so next is IT automation. Every one of you here uses IT service management. Every one of you. And typically, I get feedback. We have rolled out incident, we have rolled out requests, we have rolled out change. We want to work with our technology teams on DevOps, health of CMDB, data foundation, CJ can we get back in the box. A lot of feedback on constant improvement. So we have done many, many things on the ITSM product line, whether it's CMDB workspace, which impacts the entire platform, workforce optimization, process optimization, DevOps for change management that can integrate with your engineering teams in whatever DevOps tools chain they are using, and really allow you to be agile and get maximum value out of service now. So these are some of the key technologies that we are gonna show you right now. But before that, this is a customer-driven event. It's an event about you. So rather than me saying something, I wanna call on stage. And before I do that, this is a company that does everything like Bill said yesterday at an exponential scale. Two of their core principles are customer obsession and operational excellence. Those are their core principles. And nobody personifies this more than head of OpStack IT for Amazon, Mike Stone. Please welcome on the stage.
every single time I see you, you look taller than Zoom. Every single time. <laughs> I have All right. Effect, yeah. So, Mike, thanks for being here. And I know your family is being here, too. Yeah, so I appreciate thank you. you bringing them on board. Thank you. It's been awesome. Um, Mike, you had a phenomenal, phenomenal journey at Amazon from front lines. Tell us about your journey and what do you do for Amazon? Yeah. So my name is Mike Stone. I'm the Global Director for Ops Tech Solutions. I've been with Amazon a little bit over 10 years. Uh, I've done a variety of things. I started out as a frontline leader with our associates in our fulfillment business, uh, grew to a director, you know, running one of those million square foot facilities with all the robots and, and fun stuff in there. Uh, had a detour as the Global Director of Safety of Safety. Fulfillment, which was a very interesting ride, especially during the pandemic. And then over the past two years, uh, joined the IT organization. So my team is responsible for all the actual you know, fulfillment operations, making sure they're connected to our infrastructure. So if you're clicking buy online, all the magic that happens behind the scenes, we've got to keep it all connected. So it's about 7,000 different operations globally, uh, anywhere from a million square foot facilities uh, that I used to run to a couple hundred square feet facilities that are doing delivery station operations in remote parts of the world. Uh, I've got about 5,000 IT professionals, technicians and engineers, leadership, uh, some service desk folks that are just there to ensure that we are keeping the lights on, everyone's getting their packages at the right time uh, that they expected, but also just deploying new technology to make us more efficient. So it's kind of a fun intersection where all the operational technology comes through my organization, so we get a really, really broad spectrum of fun things going on. That's amazing. So now you know when your prime order doesn't show up, who you need to reach out to. That, that's that's phenomenal that behind the scene and you from an automation robotic standpoint you guys have done just incredible job you're one of our new customers on ITSM and you were here last knowledge trying to understand the best practices from those who are here yep. tell us about why service now and how is that going yeah when I joined the organization and took kind of a inventory of all the different challenges we had and it was pretty obvious. And I've heard a lot of these stories. I've been a lot of the breakout sessions here. And we've grown very, very quickly. We've created you know, tools in an ad hoc fashion to solve individual problems. And then when the smoke clears, you know, my organization is jumping between, I think it was 80 different tools to do their daily work. And you know, the goal that was given to me is to build a more efficient organization that scales appropriately with the business. And we had to find an IT service management platform. We did our research, CJ, and congrats, you're at the, the top of the heap there. So uh, made our decision a lot easier. But uh, for us, it really was like, how do we scale? Like that was the first you know, big challenge. So uh, integrating our incident management platform coupled with a workforce management piece of it. Like I've got you know, uh, an army of IT professionals embedded in our operations across the world. We've got to be able to use that economy of scale appropriately to jump from place to place to place and understand where our folks are at, the skills they've got, dynamically routing our tickets to those places to make sure that they can have a seamless work experience, like, is a game changer for our organization. I'm very excited about those things. They went live very fast. They stayed inside the box, use everything that we provide, and truly, because they have learned from all of you here, and you know, my phenomenal piece is workforce, their skill set, how do you match it, how do you write the tickets correctly, and going live across this fulfillment centers globally, that's a non-trivial thing. So totally makes sense. So where does the future hold between ServiceNow yeah. and Amazon? Yeah, it's still early on, so it's a lot of fun. And just shout out to all my, uh, my Amazonians out there that's been driving this for us. Thank you so much for all the hard work there. And it's been amazing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just seeing all the fun feedback we're getting with, uh, with how we're rolling these things out, but we're going to start you know, sliding in new modules, right? Like we're just talking about now, like how do we get the right resource to the right problems at the right time? Uh, but we can get proactive, right? The CMBD work that's going to have to happen, the problem management space, mm -hmm. that we can start solving problems. Like we have been a culture that has really been just customer obsessed about anytime somebody's got a problem, we're going to fix it as soon as possible and really, really satisfy our customers. But like, God forbid, we prevent the problems from happening. Like that's where we're going to evolve uh, from just a support organization to a business partner. And there's so much fun there. And I'm really excited about you know, the, the thousands of IT professionals we've got there. You know, that's their day job, but they're a technologist at heart. Like they yeah. love tinkering, they love inventing and giving them a tool set where all their data is there in one place and the low code, no code uh, aspects of your product. Like the creativity is gonna be just the faucet's gonna turn on. I'm really excited to see what comes That's out amazing. of it. That's amazing. You guys are a prime example on automation in everything, using ServiceNow for automation, starting with all fulfillment centers that deliver packages around the world. 
the scale is just enormous. Thank you for being a great customer, great partner, and always giving us feedback where we can be better. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Stone. Thank you, everyone. So to show you some exciting innovations in terms of automation, getting value out of ITSM, process optimization, Paul Hong is going to, who is our designer for our technology workflow. Paul, let's see what you got to show. Thanks, CJ. We deployed Success Dashboard about a year ago, and it's been an absolute game changer for us. We can check in regularly on how we're doing, and I'm doing a monthly review with my team right now, so let's see how we're doing. Well, it's not great. CSAT is going down. Mean time to resolve is going up. These insights might provide some clue as to what's going on. Wow. We have over 2,000 incidents that are deviating from the standard path of handling. It's adding two and a half days to the average processing time. I'm going to dig into this more in process optimization. So it looks like the deviations are from password reset incidents. Of course. You can see this is the standard path. Here's the deviation. Here's that extra step, pending user input. I'm actually messaging one of my leads on the side about this right now, and it turns out that it's taking two and a half days for agents to connect with employees to verify their identity so that they can reset their password. Let's see if there are any automation opportunities that can help here. Yep, this first one right here. It is an out-of-the-box virtual agent topic for handling scenarios just like this, password reset. I love these out-of-the-box topics. I don't have to do anything, just deploy it. I'm going to do that right now. So what does that look like from an employee standpoint once we deploy this? I'm logged in as if I were an average user into our employee center, and I'm going to ask virtual agent to help me reset my password. So with just a couple questions, it asks me to authenticate myself, and then it helps me reset my password. So we went from two and a half days to two and a half minutes. That's all automated. Like I said, game changer. I bet you CSAT's going to go back up. Speaking of which, going back to the monthly review, let's imagine that we can fast forward in time one month to see how we're doing then. CSAT is going back up. Mean time to resolve, going back down. That's what I love to see. We are back on track. This is amazing. With process optimization, I get deep insights into our workflows. Can maximize efficiency with automation opportunities. And with Success Dashboard bringing it all together, I can improve constantly our overall delivery. I can increase productivity. I can reduce costs. I can literally make everybody happier. This is not just a success dashboard. It is my success dashboard. Thank you so much, Paul. That's wonderful. This specific opportunity within ITSM to really, or any processes within ServiceNow, you can mine it as in process mining and really figure out bottlenecks and then do something about it so that you get higher value, better employee experience, and at the end of the day, higher productivity for your entire organization. So the next one, of course, is digital experiences. Now, listen, digital experiences, this is a journey, whether it's an employee experience or customer experience, it's always hard, you can always do better. Even some of my favorite apps that I use on my phone, I'm like, mm, I wish they did this, they did that. Uh, so we can always do better. But the first thing, from an experience perspective, what we are focused on with our theme of efficiency is, it has to be efficient while delivering these experiences. Our Employee Center Pro that we launched, which is a multi-departmental portal, that allows you to access service catalogs across the departments, because the truth is employees do not care about the organizational structure. There are constantly reorganizations happening. They just want to get work done, and they want to go to a single place, whether it's booking a room, whether it's having an HR request or a payroll request, or they're trying to onboard something and get something done in the first 90 days. But we need to improve their work experience. 
I definitely want to invite somebody to speak about this because you know whether you call it global business services or specifically our friends in HR that all of you work with, 100 years old company, their motto is to ship and deliver products and services that all of us love. Two of their guiding principles are mutuality, which I love, and second is efficiency. So with that, we are gonna invite Angela Manjapani, president of Global Business Services at Mars Incorporated. Angela. Hey. All right. All right. Morning, CJ. That was quite an entrance. Yeah, well, for you. Yes, love the shoes, love the yes, shoes. Yes, thank you. If everybody see the shoes, you need to know the story behind the shoes and CJ and M&Ms. CJ came to visit me, first time we met, about a year ago, yeah. in Newark, New Jersey, which is where MW office is, Mars Wrigley office, and we were all squished together in a room. I unfortunately couldn't find a bigger room, so the poor guy was with us and the team, and we sent him home, big box of chocolate, and he also said, next time I'm gonna host, Angela, because I think I have something a little bit bigger for you. Little did I realize that it's in Vegas, with 10,000 of his closest friends. Yeah, very good, very good. And I see you have an envelope. I feel like this is an Academy Award and you're gonna give me something. Uh, so can I, I see do. you? Hold on, hold on. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, hold okay. on a minute. Okay. Okay. So yes, I do have an envelope here. Again, I wanted to bring another big box of chocolate. And unfortunately, my carry-on could not fit it. So I thought, what's the next best thing? Next best thing is to go to mms.com and order online some candy for you, some M&Ms, yes. which I know your favorite, but there's something special. And actually for all of you, if you look in front of your chairs, you can open it up. And for all of you, ServiceNow personalized M&Ms. Right. And remember, there's graduations coming up and all kinds of events in the spring. So remember, MMS.com. All right. <laughs> She's not, she's not literally sweet, figuratively sweet as well. Love this thing, and I'm definitely not gonna chew in front of you, but you can, you can, not judging. I'm gonna put this away. So Angela, yeah. you have a big responsibility for Mars Incorporated, 100 years old company, efficiency. Tell us about what you're solving for Mars. Yeah, so first of all, I'm from Mars, not the planet. <laughs> but, the, but a beautiful company that's over 100 years old, it's $45 billion, has 140,000 associates. And I know that many of the brands you love, like Snickers, M&M's, Pedigree Whiskus, and Banfield Hospital. What we do in Mars Global Services, which is what I run, is essentially do all the activities that go across those segments. Mm -hmm. So we have eight service lines that's managed by 3,000 associates. Some of these service lines, for example, paying the bills. Right, your AP, collecting the cash, AR, closing the books, finding your talent, talent acquisition, learning and development, digital technologies, which yeah. ranges from cybersecurity all the way to automation hub. So that's what we do. But you asked me, okay, what was the problem, right? I think that yes. was part two of the question? Yes, it is yes. kind of part two of the question. That's a pretty broad scope for this many associates. What would be a successful outcome? for the problem you're trying to solve with the efficiency. Yeah, so what, what happened in our case is we were so focused on efficiency, so focused on effectiveness, that the poor associate was getting bombarded with all of our different areas that we were optimizing at a functional level. Sound familiar? And so the poor associate was saying, you know what, I got so many portals to go to, I need to maneuver my way through the system. They were extremely frustrated. We weren't really following our efficiency principle, if you think about it, so we had to solve that problem. That's great. If, for the, when you fast forward, hopefully you come back next year with more candies. Yes. But if you fast forward, what do you plan to do with ServiceNow to make GBS and Mars Incorporated mm. really, really successful? So what we're doing, taking this problem, is we're, we're, we're doing a pivot, we're doing something different than what we've done in the past. First of all, we are going to listen to all of our associates. 
those are our employees. We're going to really actively listen and find out what does it feel like for them. We are going to address the problem with an experience-first lens. Now, this does not mean happy clappy. This is not making everybody happy. But what it means is we want to create a frictionless environment for our associates. And then the third part that we want to do is have the opportunity to build up the capabilities within global services through the use of technology. Uh, AI, generative AI, for example, and, and really bridge it to create a human-centric answer to address the problem. So hopefully next year you'll invite me back and we can tell you how that went. That's great. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, Angela Manjipane, oh, Mars I forgot. and, and I forgot, yes, Sorry, yes, yes, I forgot. Yes. If you're yes. really interested in this, at one o'clock today with Gretchen, yeah. I will be in the Bellini room and we're going to have a little fireside chat. So. Uh, don't come out for that if you want to know more. So Thank nice. you. Thank you. All Thank right. you very much. Thank All you. right. So now we are going to show employee experience in action. Our wonderful Chief Digital Information Officer, Chris Betty, and our wonderful People Officer, Jackie Kenny. They work together, create an amazing employee portal. So we're going to switch persona and I'm gonna invite somebody where I'm manager at ServiceNow, and she is actually, in real life, employee that I work with, a phenomenal leader, runs our product experiences, these amazing experiences. Please welcome on stage, Amy Loki. CJ, and great to be here with you guys today. I'm gonna to show you one of my very favorite ServiceNow products. That's our Employee Center Pro. I use this product every single day to get my work done, and what I love is it brings all my tasks together in one place. So you can see here, I can check out how our business is doing, I can see what Bill's been up to, and I can also get all my work done in terms of approvals um, and process tasks that I need to do. Today what I want to do is my team has worked incredibly hard at all the demos that you've seen today, and so I want to throw a party for them when we get back. Using Employee Center Pro, and thanks to our integrations with Workplace Services and AI Search, I can pop in here and quickly reserve a room, including catering and anything else I might need to throw a great party for my team. We've also recently integrated maps, and so I can check out the map of our campus, and I can see what rooms are available, and I can choose my favorite room, which is Capri. Great island in Italy, also a room with lovely views. It's going to be the perfect setting for this party. So really quickly, I can get that done. Now, there was something that caught my eye when I was on my homepage here, and that had to do with my own personal growth and development. This is a new area that we're adding to the Employee Center Pro as of Vancouver, and it's called our Employee Growth and Development Hub. So I'm gonna go in and get ready for this conversation that I'm gonna have with my manager about my career. So we have a beautiful new profile page, and on the profile page, I can see all the skills that I've been working on as I grow and develop at ServiceNow. I can see a lot of them I'm pretty much nailing at this point with five stars, and CJ's even verified it. That's why they've got that star. There's one I've been working on, and that's giving a live demo. And I think since I'm doing that right here in front of all of you, it's time to eat, make that a little bit better. So I'm gonna actually give myself a higher rating on that and add that to my profile. <laughs> all right. So, and then next, I'm gonna check out my career growth page. This page gives me everything I need to do to manage my career. And I can see that my aspiration is here. This makes me feel incredibly motivated about what I'm doing at ServiceNow. And my aspiration is to be a chief experience officer. So I'm really glad that CJ will be able to see that, but I want to make sure that he knows that I want to talk about that in our conversation. So I'm going to add that talking point so that CJ is going to be ready when we meet. Wow. I think I just got an alert. I actually did, but I'm not taking out my phone. I just got an alert but Amy needs to have a growth conversation with me. And rating of four, you agree she did four? Yes? Pretty good, five? All right. <laughs> so this, let me go to my growth center and see, all right, that Amy wants to have this conversation. I go down, live demo skills, and discuss becoming a CEO, Chief Experience Officer. Well, I'm not sure about that, 
but <laughs> let me see. Wow, manager library. So this in manager hub gives me all the information I need to have a meaningful conversation. You know, performance conversations are very hard. We are trying to do skills mapping and then drive workflows and then have the content that is provided by your HR department so I can have a meaningful growth conversation. I can't believe you texted me, Ames. You could have just told me, I was right here. Yeah. But look forward to having growth conversation with you. Amy Loki, ladies and gentlemen, and thank the you. other part. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so thank you for the support, everyone. I appreciate that. And just to recap, here's why we're so excited about our employee experience offerings. So EC Pro is that personalized front door for employees. It's everything that we need to get done, and it saves time and effort by serving the most common requests. And we're really excited about the new employee growth and development product launching in Vancouver, which includes the skills and aspirations to keep everyone motivated about their work. Thank you, CJ. Thank you very much, Amy. All right, next chapter. So we talked employee experience, but now customer experience, as in your end customers, whether they are businesses or just direct to consumer, as in end customers. Now our, our approach, we released this product first time in 2016, at Knowledge right here. And our approach has been very different on customer service and field service. And before you try to understand that very complicated diagram, let me just tell you something. We took an approach, you know, we are known for our mid-office, back-office digital workflows, IT organization with our roots and many others. Approach we took is, since we are really good with those mid-office, back-office workflow, let's create an engagement layer across omni-channel so that you can serve your customers really, really well. Because this industry that has been around for a very long time Typically what you hear is a very simple thing. CEO priority, delivering great customer experience, customer net promoter score, et cetera, et cetera. And the industry has done all this work on contact center, engagement center, this, that, and so on. Our approach, you really cannot serve your customers well unless your front office, mid office, back office works in unison with each other. So the NPS goes up, you provide proactive care, and your customers are delighted. So to speak about somebody who just rolled out our customer service product, now, even though this is not a witness stand, I'm not making a confession, but I'm addicted to oat milk latte. I've had four of them so far, and that was before nine o'clock. And I'm serious, that's the app I use the most after all the email and productivity apps. And their motto is, hey, we are not a coffee company that serves people, we are a people company that serves coffee. So please welcome on stage, head of technology operations, what an amazing brand, amazing coffee, Don Larson on stage from Starbucks. All right, that's pretty good. I like it, Don. <laughs> so Don. I have discussed with you my obsession with your product, and I'm sure many of you here love and enjoy your product and services. Thank you. Thank you all for being such great customers. <laughs> so tell us about your role at one of the most iconic brands in the world. Yeah, you bet. Uh, well, my name is Don Larson. I'm the VP of Technology Operations. I've been a Starbucks partner for five years, and I lead an organization that is really focused on elevating technology uh, experiences for partners and customers, so uplifting. So everything from 24 by 7 support for our stores, um, but also responsibility to work back with our engineering teams to make sure disruption never happens in the first place. Wow, and one of the key terms she used, how Angela did uh, associates, Starbucks has a very specific meaning for partners. Can you describe what you mean by partners and why sure. does that matter? Everybody who works for Starbucks is known as a partner. So that includes everybody in our stores, our baristas, our store managers, shift supervisors, partners in our manufacturing sites, and, and even corporate folks like me. That's great. So tell us 
your journey with ServiceNow in solving for your partners and for your end customers like me. Yep. Well, like most of you, we started out with ITSM a few years ago, and we started with technology in our technology service desk. Um, but we've been on a journey to consolidate um, our contact centers, um, including our, our employer partner, partner contact center, which we launched last fall. Yep. And then uh, just recently in March, we launched our customer contact center on ServiceNow as well. If you go to your app, when you need help, or if you go to website and if you have an issue with rewards program, customerservice.starbucks.com, powered by ServiceNow, by her team, and amazing, amazing people who work at Starbucks, and that's what you see here. Well done, Don, yeah. on that piece. Very well done. Thank you. So I know that this is just the first step in delivering for your partners and customers. What does the future hold for ServiceNow? Yep. Well, uh, between us and yep. Starbucks. We're going to continue our journey of consolidating our contact centers. So we have our supply chain team is up next. Uh, ethics and compliance is next. And I should say one of the problems that we were trying to solve uh, for is that we were forcing an org chart uh, onto our store partners in particular. Uh, they had to know the difference between technology, facilities, employees, and really knowing where to go. And so with our increasing business, uh, we've, you know, obviously we've been growing uh, our business a lot. We have a lot of new loyalty members. Thank you again for that. And then we've been introducing new, new business channels like delivery. It's really created a lot of complexity for our stores. And so we're working to streamline that support mechanism for our partners so that they can focus on uh, craft and coffee with our customers. Yeah, your business model has shifted a lot, especially on the onset of COVID and then the app usage, and I go in and I pick up my yep. cup of coffee. Really, really well done. And tell us how the contact center go live, how has it been received by both your partners and end customers? Yeah, no, it's been very instrumental. Uh, we have a very strong partnership with our GBS organization, mm -hmm. and so huge call out to them in terms of the work we're doing together. Uh, with them, we've been able to uh, deploy an enhanced self-service portal as well as a chat feature. That is amazing. Please give a big round of applause, Don Larson, Starbucks, so that you can get your right. coffee every single Thanks, time. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. So our final chapter of today is intelligence. Now, ServiceNow has a history with intelligence. We started infusing AI talent. I remember Pat Casey, first time in 2017, told me, hey, CJ, maybe we start with supervised machine learning, and that's what was built in the platform. And then in 2018, we launched ITSM Pro, and we have consistently gone after use case after use case to see how AI, especially machine learning, can be infused in the platform. As the technologies have evolved, which use cases does it really impact? And that's what we have been focused on. Now, generative AI, this, we believe firmly, will be a catalyst for the ServiceNow platform. It is an augmentation technology that when combined with ServiceNow workflows, will allow your end users, customer service agents, IT agents, or any type of end users, we have a quite a big library on what Gen AI can specifically do in the context of ServiceNow platform. And when you look at here a variety of use cases, and we'll share with you the roadmap, you know, it definitely makes a huge difference in the ITSM context, security incident management, risk, higher level of deflection, intent understanding, summarization of the long notes on an incident or a case, knowledge-based summarization, in real English, where you can ask in natural language and you get a response in a summarized way. Similarly with GBS organization, employee request, customer service, and of course, for all of you and ServiceNow developers out there, we believe that this technology has reached an inflection point where we can do something meaningful for all of you here and for your end users. So then you'll ask me a question, okay, CJ, so this is the thing that everybody talks about. What is your strategy? And many of you have reached out 
as this world is shifting really, really fast, what is our strategy? So our strategy is very simply put, two-pronged. First one is bring your own LLM. If you wanna bring your own LLM, whether it's open AI, we are exploring a few others, this general purpose LLM, we will provide connectors through ServiceNow platform and you can leverage for certain use cases, we just launched it yesterday for search and a couple of other capabilities uh, through our store. We will continue to enhance as we look at the models, look at the use cases, and you can bring your LLM. So that's the first part of the strategy. But the real important one, from our perspective and our engineering team's perspective in context of ServiceNow platform, is domain-specific LLM. LLM that is specific as in large language model that's specific to you, and large language specific model that's trained on your data, your data stays private, you get higher accuracy, lower hallucination rate, and we deliver for you one at a time. That is the real game here. We don't need 175 billion parameters. We can train with the right open source models for you with your data, that's your data, and you get the privacy, trustworthiness, and others for use cases that matter. We are working with a variety of partners here, but our goals are very simple. We have rolled out trustworthy AI guidelines internally to everybody in engineering, and we are gonna work very hard where you say, we will tell you here are the use cases Gen AI can be impactful, and then you say, CJ, hey, we want our own LLM, or do you have something? And we'll say we have something for a IT use case or a developer use case to write uh, specific code in service now. That's our plan, okay? And I'm gonna share with you the roadmap pretty soon. But we think the future of service now and generative AI is very bright, and I'm happy to launch, you know, Copilot was already taken by many, so we couldn't do Copilot. So we are gonna launch something called Now Assist, all right, today, and Now Assist will help you with all these use cases on the side to really assist you for a variety of ServiceNow use cases. And we think this is going to be a game changer. Again, you don't have to call it Now Assist. Our platform team always makes sure that you can call it whatever for your company name and brand it however you want. But the idea is there will be an assistance on the side to help you with the use cases of ServiceNow. So today, we are gonna take a risk. Uh, you know, we just launched uh, OpenAI Connector yesterday. Uh, my team is a little freaked out, and I'm serious, they are. Uh, so we're gonna do a live demo. Okay, so I'm gonna show you Gen AI and Now Assist and how it makes, you know, it's gonna enable developers to write higher quality code faster than ever before. So I'm a developer, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the actual experience. Again, we're doing a live demo here. So you're in a code editor window, and I can actually just use natural language and just ask for code to generate basically an email validation rule. And you can see it comes back pretty quick. This saved me a ton of time. This is non-trivial amount of code I had to write, and it's gonna make me a lot more productive, and that's really good code. I'm gonna show you another example here. As I'm typing, our now assist is looking at the question that I'm asking, and it's generating code that's correct for the question that I'm asking. And as I keep typing, it's gonna keep refining that example. And so I'll go ahead and just finish this off here and show you that really just using natural language, really simple examples, it can generate really high quality code. We're really excited. This is gonna open up development on the platform to millions of new developers. It's a Seinfeld moment, I'll just walk out, thanks. <laughs> so, Joe runs our platform engineering. Thanks. What you saw was a live demo, domain-specific LLM, Glide record, Fred, I hope this made you happy. This will expand the ecosystem, you'll have enough developers to go out, and with Rise Up, we'll train even more. This is pretty awesome. All right, so next, special guest. This company is a neighbor of ours in Santa Clara. And this gentleman, who is a co-founder, president, CEO, has driven revolution in 
gaming industry, computer graphics, deep learning, and AI, somebody who got Robert Noyce Award, the highest semiconductor industry award, please welcome on stage CEO, President, and Co-Founder of NVIDIA, Jensen Wang. All right, first of all, hey. thank you for coming. I'm delighted to be here. Our colors also match. The Fantastic, green, yeah. NVIDIA and service now, so that's why we have to stand here. Looks like we just got acquired. <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> I'm a little sad, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> 30 years ago, yeah. founded NVIDIA, and leading the revolution behind deep learning. Is this truly, like you said, an iPhone moment in the AI industry? This is uh, the biggest computer industry platform transition of our generation. There's no question about that. Uh, generative AI, you, you've been talking about it all day, and, and um, this is the first computer that can automatically generate text, images, videos, proteins, genes, chemicals, uh, anything that has structure. It can learn the language of, uh, learn its representation, and, uh, and generate based on uh, input that is surprisingly easy to form, yeah. human language. And so after all of these years, we've invented a computer that we can program with human. And it's uh, really quite, quite extraordinary. And uh, it, it triggered uh, two simultaneous uh, computer industry transitions. The first is accelerated computing. Mm -hmm. Uh, our, our, uh, our growth is uh, directly tied uh, to what is happening in the industry. After 60 years, I mean, literally after 60 years, uh, we have reinvented what a computer is uh, for the very first time since the IBM System 360. Wow. Yeah, and so this is, this is a gigantic moment for the computer industry. And, uh, you know, we've installed about a trillion dollars worth of computers in the world today. Wow. And that trillion dollars worth of computers over the next 10 years will all be re, re, you know, turned over into accelerated computing systems because it now has a killer app called generative AI. And so I think this is, a, this is just a giant moment for the industry. And what a phenomenal job by NVIDIA, not only inventing GPUs, but GPUs that power AI and the deep learning advances would have not happened without your vision and your team's hard work. So Jensen, one of the things that this great, you know, all of these are our customers, as you see them, it's a pretty large room. Hi, customers. <laughs> um, tell us about, you know, 175 billion parameters on ChatGPT 3.x. Yeah. Of course, we can do that. So your software offering, Nemo, what was the vision behind it and how you think we are working together so that we can provide Gen AI for all these customers. Yeah, one of the things that you said, that was, uh, I was listening to your, your talk earlier, and you Thank said Thank you very, for that. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was an excellent keynote. Um, uh, that you said very, very appropriately is that there are, there are general purpose AI, and that's going to be really terrific uh, to help interpret, uh, do nuanced or the, uh, the uh, uh, imprecise uh, meaning of uh, people who want to interact with computers. However, what uh, all companies will need to do, and what we've done in, inside our company, is create highly specialized domain-specific AIs. We don't, you know, it's great to have intelligence, um, but we have very specific skills and we have very specific tasks and informed by proprietary knowledge and domain uh, information that we want to train our AIs to do. In our case, we want to train an AI to design chips, um, or to uh, architect our chips, or even uh, design our, uh, our kernels, our math kernels, in a way that no human possibly can. And so we, we uh, come up with AIs that create AIs that help explore the entire design space, and we run it on 
are AI supercomputers, mm -hmm. and they collaborate with our engineers, and they come up with designs that no humans possibly can. And so we, we would like to do this, and, and your vision is to, to do this for all of the world's okay. enterprise. Yeah. Uh, ServiceNow is the world's enterprise service platform. Thank you. And over time, you will add on top of it uh, domain-specific AIs uh, that would be optimized for the data and the domain skills of each of your customers. That's correct. We would love to partner with you to be the back end of that. We have the AI capability, the ex AI expertise. Uh, we've uh, developed a state-of-the-art large language model system, which includes pre-trained models of large, medium, small, and tiny sizes. You know, the, reasons, the reason why you need large and small models, just, just uh, you're probably reading a lot of press around this right now, you need large and small models because obviously you want to deploy into many places in an optimal way. Uh, but you need the large models to teach the medium models, Correct. to teach the small models, small models, to teach the tiny models. And so before you have tiny models, you actually need very large models. And so we've created the whole family of it in a pre-trained way, including the guard railing systems, uh, the supervised fine-tuning systems, the reinforcement learning human feedback systems, and the vector databases that will be connecting your uh, proprietary information and knowledge base into it. And so in combination, the system allows our collaboration to create specialized models for your customers that could be deployed on the ServiceNow platform. And that is exactly what we are working on. Our engineering teams are working with Jensen's and Vidya teams to have domain-specific LLMs. We are actually starting with ITSM as a use case. Uh, and Jensen's team proudly showed us this morning the accuracy rates are pretty high, and we cannot wait to roll this out for you in our releases coming soon. And Jensen, you know, first of all, I'm just inspired by all the work NVIDIA has done on deep learning and LLMs. One of the things that many of us didn't know, I didn't know until we started our uh, relationship with you, is you have an amazing software team and you have enabled ecosystem around the world that can leverage the power of NVIDIA. You delivered the first DGX personally to OpenAI team. Yeah. And I mean, just, I think about all these innovations and how your team behind the scene sometimes are unsung heroes, and that's what you're gonna do with us so that they can be all heroes in Gen AI. Thank you very much for Love being that. with us. Thank you for coming today. Thank you, today. CJ. And really looking Thank forward you. to this partnership. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. So, wow, he is an amazing, amazing innovator and a visionary and a legend. Whew. So, our roadmap is pretty simple. We have Utah release right now. We just launched connectors yesterday to OpenAI. And as we go through Vancouver releases, we are going to create multiple use cases around NavAssist. Also summarize search results, what Rita showed, and then what Joe showed with Glide-specific assist so that many, many people can be part of ServiceNow ecosystem. We want to end with a very special section like Gen AI. If we take the liberty, not too far out, but just a couple of years out, maybe one year out, what would that look like to show you that our vision for Gen AI. Please welcome again on stage, Amy Loki. All right, so what does the future of ServiceNow and generative AI look like? Let's take a look. The first thing every customer needs to do with our product is some light configuration. So let's see this now with Now Assist. Eric opens up the service ops workspace in UI Builder. This time, instead of making changes in configuration panels, which may have taken hours or days, Eric can breeze through the process with Now Assist, right here in that right-hand panel. Eric needs to add a new chart that is important to his IT service delivery team. They want to know when any kind of service change creates a priority one incident. 
Now Assist quickly generates three different options. Eric can shorten the time frame in this chart just using this chat interface, changing it down to one week. Once the chart is ready, Eric can drag it right onto the page, and he's already done. Next, Eric needs, thank you. Eric next needs to build a workflow, right? So he needs the team to be notified by an email when P1 incidents occur. Now Assist can create that flow for him and even take him into Flow Designer. Right, okay, so Eric, get this, Eric can watch that flow getting built right in front of his eyes. This is creating an email notification for the tier two agents just like he described. And now Assist can even suggest a better idea, posting a message to the agents in Teams. Eric can add that Teams notification, he can activate the flow, and then jump back into UI Builder to give this product one last look. Woo! So everything looks great. It's good to go. And so what used to take days of work is now done in minutes. Eric can notify the admin that this product is ready to deploy. All right. So we have tons of examples of how this can help every persona, but I'm just going to have time to show you one more. Let's see how Now Assist can help every employee create an application on the ServiceNow platform. So Hillary needs to manage inbound requests for corporate headshots. She goes to her Employee Center portal, and she uses Now Assist in the search box at the top of her page. She enters a pretty complex question, asking how to create a form to manage headshot requests. And Now Assist knows exactly what she needs. She's directed to Creator Studio, where she can start building that application. So now Assist takes Hillary to Creator Studio, and this is where she can build these custom applications on the platform. Now Assist asks her for just a little bit more information, and Hillary describes what she needs. She needs an intake form and a way to manage these requests. Based on apps like this, Now Assist even suggests a date picker for scheduling. Hillary remembers she needs to get people's consent so she can use their photos and marketing materials, and she adds that requirement. Just in a very quick conversation, Now Assist is ready to generate this application. All right, we're going to see Now Assist get to work. Hillary gets to see this form built right in front of her eyes like magic. And she can continue to refine it here using the conversational experience. Hillary asks for an additional form field to be added. She's already got the name and the email listed, but she wants to add employee titles right below the email field. And next, she specifies a workflow. Hillary needs to get an email notification when employees submit a new headshot request. Using Now Assist, Hillary can create a workflow in Creator Studio without even needing Flow Designer. And look, there it is. One last thing that Hillary feels like this form needs is a little bit of, you know, beautiful illustration. So she asks if it can add an illustration to the top of the form. Now Assist generates four options that fit with her company's brand. She looks through and she picks the illustration that she likes best. That one with the camera is just perfect, and the form is looking great for her. So she decides to preview the experience now, and she can see exactly what it'll look like on the Employee Center portal. She can also check and see how it looks on mobile. And when she's previewing the form, Now Assist has also created that management experience, a brand new workspace for her where she can manage all those inbound requests. She previews the workspace, and it looks perfect. She can see all the requests come in. She can see when they're scheduled. She can manage the level of that request and how it's coming in. And everything is there and organized for her. So she previews her new application one last time on the portal and decides her work is done. So she submits it for review with her IT team. Hillary is so excited. She has created her very first application on the ServiceNow platform using no code at all. <laughs> Woo!
And then the next time she goes to her portal, she can see that her application is live, it's published, and she can go see it there. So this is the power of the platform being extended by Hillary using Now Assist to use her very first no-code app. So ServiceNow Assist is built into our platform. It's going to serve every single persona that uses our product, and it will accelerate the productivity of all of our users across our products. Back to you, CJ. Thank all you. All right, she did awesome. <laughs> Thanks. So this is what we have, ladies and gentlemen, for you. We talked about core of our IT and transformation and automation we are driving for you, working really hard for our admins and platform owners, employee experience, customer service, and ending with intelligence. Please go today to all the spotlights, and at the end, I just wanna say I'm so excited to be with you again, to see you again next year, Knowledge. Thank you very much.